to St. Luke United Methodist Church. We're glad that you're tuning in to our worship service here today. I do have several things that I want to remind you about uh, as we continue to do um, church and the life of uh, the community of faith through this season of uh, separatedness. Uh, I wanted to remind you of a couple of opportunities. Uh, the first is that we do have our worship services, of course, on, on Sunday mornings uh, that we are pre-recording the week before and offering uh, thanks to Chase Coleman in a uh, united form on Sunday mornings. Another opportunity is that we are doing Zoom Bible studies on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. Um, we've got a small group of people that are tuning in to that Zoom Bible study at this time, but all are welcome to join. We just need to, to know that that's something that you're interested in. If you are interested in it, uh, then send an email to uh, the church office and we will collect a list of people and have that Zoom uh, session uh, for you on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. Right now, uh, we are doing a Bible study from Max Licato. Uh, the Bible study is called You'll Get Through This. And we are starting our third session this week, and it's a great time to, uh, to join in and, and come and be a part of that. So you're invited. Hope that you will uh, join with us on this coming Tuesday. Uh, I think that's really all the, the things that I wanted to let you know about that are going on in the life of the church right now. We are still awaiting news from the bishop as of now. Uh, this is a Wednesday that I'm recording this, uh, and we're expecting some news from him in the coming days. So hopefully soon we'll know some parameters about how we can get back into the swing of things uh, in the life of the church. We're glad that you're tuning in today, and uh, we hope that you enjoy the service. Let's open uh, with a word of prayer, and then we will sing our opening song. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to gather together from our own living rooms, from our own homes, uh, as we come together in spirit, virtually, uh, for worship this morning. We pray that you would lead and guide our time together uh, that you would guide our words, that you would guide our singing, our music, uh, and that we would feel your presence in our midst uh, as we gather together today. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. This was
Good morning, St. Luke kiddos. I'm glad that you're with us again this morning. So in a few moments, Kevin will be talking about how God is always at work to meet us. So does that mean it's like a game of hide and seek where I get to hide and God seeks me out? No, it's more like a game of seek and seek. So we should always be seeking him and trust that he is always seeking us. So hold on, I'm a bit thirsty. feel so much better. I say it's our job to remain thirsty for God. If we are looking for him, it will be much easier for us to see him there working to meet us. So this week, I challenge you that every time you sip on a drink, you think about ways you can seek God. Is it more prayer time, a family devotional, read a Bible verse? And parents, if you need some resources, you let me know. There's so many out there. So I can't wait to worship with you in person um, in just a few weeks. And I love you, kiddos. Good morning. We make a ton of decisions every single day. And sometimes the decisions we make are simple and easy. And sometimes they're a little harder and more complicated to know what to do. So how do we know what to do? How do we make the decisions that we're faced with? We always can lean on God. He wants to help us in making our decisions, and it starts when we walk with him and making the small ones. Things like, do you, do you tell the truth even when it hurts, or do you tell a small lie? Do you speak truth, or do you act like you didn't see it? It's the small decisions that really do matter. Uh, it's the picture that you send on Snapchat or the post that you make. It's how you treat others even when you think no one can see you or, or hear you. So when you walk with God and making the small decisions every day, it can be easier to lean on him when they start to get harder. Um, when it comes to the decisions you are faced that are harder, ask God to know what to do. And I wish I had three simple, easy steps in hearing, to hearing God's voice that I could give you, but know this. God won't lead you to, to go make a decision that goes against who you know him to be. He won't lead you to be dishonest or unkind. Now, don't hear me in saying, thinking that it's going to be easy, because it all, won't always be. Sometimes it will get hard. Sometimes it'll be lonely. But when you walk with God, you never walk alone. He doesn't expect you to have all the answers. Even Proverbs tells us not to trust in our own understanding. Proverbs 3 says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go, and he's the one who will keep you on track. So when faced with decisions that are difficult, ask God for his wisdom. Keep your eyes, ears, and heart open. God never meant for us to try and do life all on our own, so walk with him. Friends, as we come to a time of prayer together this morning, I wanted to share some concerns in our midst with you. We first want to lift up Tony Ganson, uh, who is um, a friend of some folks in the life of the church. Several of you have lifted his name to me uh, through the week. Tony uh, is uh, the husband of Stephanie, and his daughter, Carly, uh, has been uh, engaged uh, in the, the business life of the church in various ways. Um, but let me tell you what's going on with Tony. Tony suffered an aneurysm this past week. Uh, he spent some time in the ICU in the hospital uh, and was in fact on a ventilator. Uh, while we're recording this right now, it's uh, a Wednesday. Uh, and so on this Wednesday, they were planning to take him off of the ventilator uh, with the expectation that everything will uh, go in a positive direction from here. Uh, so, but do continue to remember Tony in, in, our, in our prayers together. Also remember Wendy Smith, who is a friend of Julia Jarabek's, uh, Matt and Julia Jarabek. Uh, she's been diagnosed with endom endometrial cancer. Um, and so we, we want to lift her in our prayers uh, as we're going forward. Uh, she does not fight alone. 
Uh, then a few more prayer concerns. Linda Garcia's friend Kate uh, has requested prayer for two of her friends in Fort Lauderdale who have been diagnosed with cancer. One is Fabio, uh, who has been diagnosed with acute leukemia, and then uh, Lucia, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer. I uh, want to continue to remember the Seneca area after the tornado um, disaster. I want to remember those who are part of the recovery effort there. I know <clears throat> there are some even in the life of our church uh, who are continuing to uplift and work to help those uh, in that area. Uh, continue to uh, think about uh, those who are serving uh, throughout that area and also <clears throat> the, the nation and the world as uh, we sort through uh, how to respond appropriately to uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, a few more names that I want to lift up. There are many to pray for. Uh, I want to continue to remember Mildred Katermas. Also want to continue to remember Tommy Crumpton, Art Jordan, uh, Don Leppard, Doris Mays, Wes Murphy, Bob Thien. Uh, I know that there are many uh, in, in, our, in our midst that, that you would want us to be prayerful for. Uh, if you want us to pray for certain, uh, certain persons uh, and feel comfortable doing this, you can put those prayer concerns as a comment to this YouTube video. You can also call the church office and we will um, add those concerns to our prayer list. Uh, let's go together to the Lord in prayer and then we will uh, say the Lord's Prayer at the end together. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks uh, for the blessings that are abundant around us. Even though circumstances Lynn, that things are quite different for us in the present than we're used to. There are many gifts and blessings, gifts and graces around us that you call us to notice uh, and to receive. Lord, we thank you uh, for the gift of family, for the gift of good friends, for the gift of church family, and for how we are called to connect with one another, uh, even given our context of isolation. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you send people to make phone calls, uh, to stop by and visit, uh, Lord, to, to take time to talk with us while we uh, see each other from afar in the grocery store. Lord, we thank you that you call persons into our lives to uh, remind us of your gifts and blessings in these ways. And we're thankful, Lord, uh, that you call us to do the good work of extending hope and help uh, to those in need through this time. Uh, Lord, we're thankful uh, that, that you use your community of faith uh, in positive and beneficial ways uh, throughout this community. Uh, we're thankful to be able to be a part of the effort of response uh, to those affected by the tornado in Seneca. Uh, we are thankful to be a part of the effort to support and uplift those uh, in our own church family who are undergoing difficulty and strife, uh, whether it be from uh, unplanned circumstances or the, the continuing need of doing those planned procedures uh, to help us remain healthy and safe. Lord, we're thankful for how you work and move through us. Uh, today, O oh God, we pray that you would lead us as we worship and pray together, uh, as uh, we join together uh, through the, the technology uh, offered to us through the, through the internet and through the ways that we are called to connect uh, here in this space today. Uh, and we pray, God, that we would hear uh, your message sent to us and, and it would work in us to, to move and transform. Uh, thank you that you call us, oh God, to be your disciples, to be in direct relationship with you. Thank you, oh God, that you know us as your children, as your family, and that you care for us in that way. 
Lead us now, God, as your disciples, as your family, to join together in praying the prayer uh, that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer, as we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Acts. We're going to read chapter 17. I have here that we're reading verses 22 through 31. It might be a little bit more than that. Um, but it is chapter 17. Um, I'm going to actually start in verse 16 and go there through um, verse 31, which is almost to the end of the chapter. So let's start verse 16. Acts chapter 17, verse 16 through verse 31. Listen for the word of the Lord to you, to me, to us uh, as uh, we read this scripture passage together. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace, every day with those who happened to be there. Also, some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, 
We ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have a world uh, have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead this is the word of god for us the people of god thanks be to god Let's pray together. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me now. Use my words to speak your message. Get me out of the way uh, so that your message can be heard by this, your people. Um, we're thankful to be able to worship you uh, in spirit and in truth today. Lead us, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was the first day uh, for me in college. And if I'm honest, it was a pretty rough day. I had four tough classes that I was taking uh, during that first semester of uh, my freshman year in college. And I had just been to two of the four classes that morning. We'd gone through syllabus work and I knew already that college was going to be a lot different than high school. Finally, lunch hour came, and as I walked into the lunchroom for the very first time, I knew that everything was going to be okay. There were options all around. I simply scanned my college ID to pay for my lunch in ways that I really didn't understand and in ways that wasn't pulling cash out of my pocket. And then I went and looked at what options were before me. They had a home-cooked meal station where you could take a home-cooked meal, eat the whole home-cooked meal. They had a potato bar. They had a salad bar. They even had a dessert bar that was there for every single meal that I ate in Moffat Dining Hall at Erskine College. And then they had an ice cream machine. So in case you didn't like the dessert at the dessert bar, you could always get a bowl of soft serve ice cream. I began to understand where the freshman 15 came from after those first few weeks of my freshman year in college. There were options everywhere. The same is the case for the teachings that are abundant in the city of Athens in Greece, uh, where Paul is located in our scripture passage for today. There are a variety of schools which are teaching different ways to live according to our lives in this world. A variety of schools. Two of them are mentioned in our scripture passage you are probably going to already know them before I tell you, but it's the Stoics and the Epicureans. The Stoics and the Epicureans. These two schools in Paul's time dominated people's perspectives, especially in the city of Athens. The Stoics lived life in a way that was true to their minds. It was true to their minds. They thought that the way we think trumps the way that we feel. The way we think trumps the way that we feel. And then on the other side of the debate were the Epicureans who believed that what mattered the most was our pleasure. Our pleasures mattered the most. So the Stoics said, it's about how you think, it's about how you approach situations logically. And the Epicurean said, nope, it's all about how you feel. It's all about the pleasure that you gain in this life. And Paul, a visitor to Greece, a, a visitor 
to Athens, sees what's going on in this context, and decides to suggest and preach a third alternative. He comes in and he says, let me tell you about this unknown God that I see this altar is dedicated to. You see, he did a tour of the town, and, and he looked around and he found in the town that there was an altar given or dedicated to this unknown God. And from there, Paul declares that he knows all about this unknown God. He says, you don't know him yet, but I will make him known. And when he makes this unknown God known, he talks about his own relationship with the God who sent Jesus into the world. He talks about this God not as one who has been created by human hands, but as a God who has created us, as a God who has created humans, the world, and all that lives and moves in the world. He talks about this God not only as creator, but also as Lord, a Lord over all of which he has created. So Paul meets the people where they are. He uses their own culture to meet them where they are and call them closer to the God who was through him seeking to meet them. Now, he could have said, much like we do, he, he could have said, oh, these people are so far from God, there's no hope for them. Sometimes we even say those words about ourselves. Oh, we've been divorced too long from God that there's no way for God to save us, for God to reach us, for God to meet us. And we, you know, you know, Paul could have said that in this context, too. He could have said, oh, this, this town is too confused. It's too chaotic for God to meet them where they are. There is no hope. But instead, Paul allows God to use his own mind, his own abilities, in order to captivate in order to draw people to the God that he knew of in his heart of hearts. God captivates the people through Paul. Now, we could feel close to giving up here in our own Athens. Whatever you want to believe, you can believe it. There is a system of support for whatever stance you have in the world in which we live. There's, there's already a pre-built system, and if there's not, then you yourself can begin to build a system of support for wherever you are in your faith life. And I'm not talking necessarily about faith in Jesus. I'm talking about faith in whatever it is that you place your faith in. We like to say in the life of the church that we're good about being faithful to Jesus, but we put faith in all kinds of things. We can put faith in food. We can put faith in alcohol. We can put faith in drugs. We can put faith in one another, which sometimes can be a good thing, especially when your group of people are people who build you up instead of breaking you down. But we choose to place our faith in all kinds of things. And so here in this passage, Paul is challenging us to place our faith in the God who has created us instead of in these made-up, created gods that he finds in the city of Athens. Instead of being a creature 
We've made the true God, um, I'm sorry, but, but instead of being a creature that, that, that we've made, the true God is the one who made us. In, instead of being a creature that our own hands have created, or an artifact that our own hands have created, the one true God is the one who has made us and calls us in to this relationship with him. We are his creatures. Paul says in the context of Athens that we are his offspring. He actually uses a saying that, that the people in Athens were used to when he, he goes to this phrase. In fact, in the scripture lesson, it's in quotes. We are his offspring. Paul uses that connection point and says that just like you're saying, you are the offspring to the gods around you. My God, the God I come to proclaim to you, is one who calls us his children. We are God's children. In our own context, I've been thinking about the possible ways that we ourselves can live into a gospel reality, into a reality that calls us out of um, the context that brings loneliness and isolation and an unconnectedness, a disconnectedness between us and others. I've been struck especially by one of the groups that Janie is in tune with on Facebook, the group's name, and you can look it up, and, and I think you can join it. The, the group's name is uh, Spread Kindness Like Confetti. Now, I gotta say, when I first uh, heard about this group, uh, I thought it was a hoax, just like everyone else. Uh, but the group is based on the idea that during our time of isolation and social distancing, we can still engage in giving gifts to one another. And so through Amazon and through uh, the U.S. Postal Service, we have been giving and receiving gifts that have been mailed back and forth uh, through this group, Spread kindness like confetti. And we've been doing it through uh, the entire time of social isolation and social distancing. Uh, now, like I said, at first I thought it was a hoax. At first I thought that, that it was a foolish waste of time. Nobody was going to ever send anything. And if we send it to somebody, they'd probably discard it if it came from a stranger. Uh, that was all until... Janie received a box of blue raspberry airheads. Blue raspberry airheads. They came in the mail. She put it online that that was one of the things that she knew that I would want. And so after a couple of days, I ate the whole box of blue raspberry airheads. And while I was eating, my faith increased in this way of spreading kindness like confetti. Now I'm ready to spread kindness. I'm ready to engage in ways, even given our constraints, even given our restrictions, I am, in, I am ready to engage in ways that shows, uh, shows others kindness and love. When we meet people where they are with the God-given gifts of truth and of love, we spread more than just kindness. We're spreading gospel, friends. We're spreading the good news of God's love for the whole world. What other better message could uh, the Apostle Paul, who spreads the gospel of love and kindness to the Athenians, even given the, the many options that are being taught to them in their own context, what, well, what a better way to live, what better way to live is there than to offer this good news of God's love for the world. Let's love each other through this, however long it takes, however uh, 
God takes us along this road. Let's choose to love one another through our time apart. Let's pray together. Lord God, this is different. It's different for me. I've been coming to this church uh, week after week. I've been recording messages that are hopefully offering hope and encouragement to others in our time of separation and isolation. And it is different. Instead of looking into the eyes of people as I uh, prepare and preach this message, I look at empty pews. I look at a camera phone. And I hope that somehow this message reaches the ears of those uh, that, I, that I know and love, part of our church family. I pray, Lord, that even in these different times, that you would call us as your people to extend our gifts to one another in ways that inspire others to remember and recount the love that you have given us through Jesus. And I pray, O oh Lord, that through that process, you would even touch our hearts. And that the love that you touch our hearts with would spread to others that we know and love. And we pray that we would be participants in your gospel story, that we would paint with your brush the picture that you're calling us to paint, even given our circumstances. We believe in you. We believe in your love. We believe in your gospel. And we want to be agents of that love. We want to be agents of that gospel today. Lead us, Lord. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, uh, as uh, we hear uh, the next song that's going to be played, I have decided to follow Jesus. Um, we um, invite you all to join with us in the uh, offertory. During our offertory, we invite you to give in several different ways. You can still write a check, uh, and you can still send that uh, through the mail service to our post office address, P.O. Box 339, Wahala, South Carolina, 29691. Uh, you can also give through our PushPay account, which is available for you there um, on the video page. You can also go to our website, stlukewahala.org, and, and use the text to give option link there on that page. Uh, let's worship God now with God's tithes and our offerings together. Thank you. 
so glad that you chose to worship with us uh, this morning. Uh, here's the benediction. Receive the blessings that are yours. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And use those blessings wherever you are, whatever's going on, uh, to bless others and for the transformation of your home, of your church, of your community, and of your world. Amen. Thank you.